Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. Today I'm going to be talking about a particularly trashy, pulpy horror author that is Graham Masterton. I'm going to talk a little bit about his writing life, which is very interesting, and show off my collection of his books. Stay tuned. Okay, everyone, so Graham Masterton is a prolific author, um, not quite as prolific as Stephen King or Dean Koontz, but yeah, he's written plenty of trashy, pulpy novels. Uh, he's working since the 70s. I think his first novel was in 76, called The Manito, and since then he's written, he's got a very large body of work. I know that he's also dipped into crime fiction as well, and he's written a number of series as well that I'm going to talk about a bit later. Um, he also wrote, as I've said, some very trashy stuff. Um, so that's actually perfect to talk about him now during Gob August. And a very interesting thing about him is when he was at school, he was apparently expelled. Like I read something on the internet, did a huge interview with him. He was expelled because he took too much interest in women. And then he got a job as a reporter. And he built his way up until he became editor of Penthouse magazine, that infamous magazine for men. And he wrote articles about women and sexuality. And then he became a best-selling author, a best-selling writer of uh, sex guides or sex manuals. And he's actually written a great number. And when he started, he basically was under an alias of Angel Smith and he became so popular and uh, it was basically a pseudonym and he even had a photograph on the cover in a wet t-shirt he became so popular that some fan sent a fan mail with a condom inside it so, <laughs> so he, after that he absolutely insisted that he was going to write under his real name and no longer under a pseudonym Another interesting story is that in Sweden he became incredibly popular because uh, his stories were obviously translated in different languages and he attended a book signing and half the signings were from men, horror fans, and the other half were from middle-aged women who basically said to him that they had actually transformed um, their sex lives as a result of his guides which is very interesting. I know that one of his books was called How to Drive Your Man Wild in Bed. How's that? Right, now we're going to talk about my collection as it stands right now. It's not particularly huge, but I'm hoping to add to it as we go along. Okay, I'm going to present my um, collection in order of publication. As I say, it's not a huge collection, but I'm kind of proud of it. Um, there's some absolutely beautiful covers in here as well. Uh, this first one was in 1978, and that is Charnel House. I already did a review on this little book. I think I did it in uh, January. And it's pretty much about sort of like a haunted house thing, uh, where the, this guy's hearing sounds in the walls, and it becomes a demon story where a demon is unleashed in the, on the city. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. Not the greatest literature in the world, but very pulpy and a lot of fun. Next up we have another book that I read and did a review on. I think it was more along May, April and that was Famine, The World on the Brink of Disaster. Now this was a great story, I think I gave it four stars and it's not so much post-apocalyptic as apocalyptic and how America is slowly basically dying of starvation and really bad people doing really bad things. And so yeah, this was a very, very entertaining read about disaster. And he wrote a number of books concerning disaster. Um, this was just one of them. That's famine. Next up, we have a book that I wasn't to so impressed with. Uh, that is The Pariah. I haven't talked about this book. 
Uh, maybe I need to give it another read because apparently it is one of his more popular books, if not his most popular. I know it takes place in a seaside town. Um, his man lo loses his wife and then he sees an apparition of her, but instead of his wife, who's dead, it's some terrible evil. And it's a seaside town, I know it's linked to a, almost like a haunted ship, and it's sort of uh, dating back to the solemn woods trials. So really I think maybe I need to give it a, another read. I don't know how fresh it is in my mind, but maybe on a second read I might enjoy it a lot more. Um, that is the pariah. Okay, and I think I missed one. Yes, Devils of D-Day. But that is in an omnibus. Now I don't normally buy omnibus, is, <laughs> uh, but this has got four books in one. Tango, The Devils of D-Day, Mirror and Charnel House. Uh, now The Devils of D-Day was released in 1979 and I just recently read that and I gave that four stars as well. Uh, that was a highly entertaining story. Uh, yeah, and that was about a World War tank, World War II tank that's haunted. Um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I did speak about that on another video as well. Okay, next up we have Famine and then Tengu, which is also in this book, which I have not read yet. Let me just tell you what it's about. In Japanese mythology, the Tengu is the most terrible of all demons, a living force of evil that infects its followers with the mad strength of the berserk and the capacity to survive attack from any weapon. Now the demon is unleashed in a diabolical plot to wreak vengeance on America for the mega destruction of Hiroshima. So it does sound very interesting. But I'll get to that. Right, next up we have Oh, already mentioned the Pariah. Tengu was in 1983. Uh, the Pariah was also in 1983. And next up we have Family Portrait, which was in 1985. Um, but yeah, this is looks very, very cool as well. Uh, murdered children that have been have their skins peeled away from their body. Uh, so it sounds absolutely disgusting. And now I have to say he does write some very, very disgusting, disturbing stuff. And my wife tried to read a book called, uh, what was it? Uh, Ritual. Ritual, which she basically threw away because it was just too much. Uh, it's a novel that deals with self-cannibalism and all sorts of grotesque things like that. And a weird cults and almost like brings in religion. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to read that book either. That sounds just a bit too much. But family portrait, maybe yes. Next up we have the first in a series called Night Warriors and this was released in 1988. How's that for a cover? Now this is about uh, ancient evil and apparently these three uh, humans become these night warriors to try and combat this ancient evil and they do so in their dreams because that is the only way where they become powerful enough to take on this evil. Um, so yeah, at one stage I'm definitely going to try and start reading a series. I've got the second book as well, which released in 1980, sorry, 1988, that was 1986. And how's this for a cover? Death Dream. Uh, yeah, that is just unbelievably scary for me. Um, so yeah, this is part one and part two, but I think it's about, about seven or eight in the series. Okay, next up, <clears throat> we have, I'm not overly impressed with this cover, I have actually said that I'm going to do a review of this book at some stage, because it's my favourite Grand Masterton book, and that is The Mirror. Now, yeah, this is a very creepy story um, about a little boy who was angelic, and he was a Hollywood star in the 1930s, and he was brutally murdered in this room with this mirror overlooking his murder and you got the screenwriter who's obsessed with him absolutely obsessed with his life and wants to bring back his life make a movie about it and he gets hold of this mirror and terrible things start to happen um, so yeah I'll do definitely do another review of this at some stage 
but that is grandmastered in a mirror. And then we have, in 1994, The Sleepless. Ah, oh, it's colourful. And this is about a helicopter crash. I think I did start reading this at some stage. I don't know why I put it down, um, but I will pick it up again. It starts off with a helicopter crash. And when I say it's gory, there are broken, torn off limbs everywhere. It is absolutely gross and disgusting. But I'll give it a go at some stage. I'll pick it up again. That is a sleepless. And finally, we have 2012. Now I find this very interesting that this cover does not look like a 2012 cover. This looks like a cover from Paperbacks from Hell. And that is Walkers. And now this is another one that's actually quite popular. It's a house that used to be a, an insane asylum. And one day the lunatics, the psychotics, just disappeared. And they disappeared into the walls. And his family moves in. And apparently the boy is taken into the walls. And they promise to kill him unless the father can somehow free them. So it sounds like a very, very interesting book with a seriously messed up cover. Um, yeah, definitely going to read this sooner rather than later. Okay, so that concludes my Grey Masterton collection. Kind of small, I know, but I'm going to keep working on that. Before we go, I just want to give you a little update on my reading so far for this week. Um, I'm really struggling through this animal attack book called Alligator. It's not a great book. Um, it's really slowing me down, but I'm determined to finish it. And then I'm determined to start reading um, The Omen, which is uh, a screenplay. The screenwriter actually writes a novel after the movie, so that ticks one of the boxes for Garb August. So I'm going to definitely finish those by Sunday, so I can give you guys a nice review. But yeah, wish me luck. I'm kind of struggling through this. The writing is, is not great. Um, but I will give you feedback on it. And also, the cover promises so much. And so far it's delivered so little. So yeah, I'm going to just keep going because I want to know how it finishes. And I'll let you guys know on Sunday. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I am planning on doing more of these kind of videos. Uh, kind of... Uh, author focused videos of the 70s and 80s as I think it's a fun way to do that and just build up my my collections a bit as well like with Ramsey Campbell and uh, others like I did with Dan Simmons and uh, who did I do it with? Dean Koontz so I'm going to plan on doing a lot more of these in the future if you like my content please like and subscribe take care of yourselves keep those pages turning and cheers